Thank you very much. It's the last presentation of the day. So first things first, let's um, change our physiology, change our state a little bit. Get your hands up in the air, reach as high as you possibly can. Now, what I need you to do is turn those hands into thumbs for me. Okay, and then we're going to take a quick picture from the stage. Perfect. And now we're going to send a quick tweet. How about best looking marketers in New England? Hashtag AOC 2015. Cool. So I want you guys to imagine a world where you can absolutely build your brand, build your business, make millions of dollars using social media and some very, very simple common sense strategies. The great news is I am here to tell you today that you do not need to imagine that world because that world is here right now in this moment, 2015. Every single person in this room can build their own brand, somebody else's brand, their own business, somebody else's business using some very, very simple strategies that we're going to talk about today. My last book, I covered 11 simple concepts to build a likable business, listening, storytelling, Passion, team playing, surprise and delight, which is why I have a couple surprises for you guys today. Responsiveness, simplicity, authenticity, transparency, adaptability, and finally, gratefulness. Today, we're going to focus on seven of those core concepts. Seven simple social concepts to drive real results for you guys. I'm going to start with listening. Then we'll talk responsiveness. Storytelling, authenticity, advertising better, providing value, and finally, gratefulness. Let's start with listening. I like to say, listen first and never stop listening. And people much smarter than me have talked about listening. Ernest Hemingway said, when people talk, listen completely. Most people never listen. And it's true. Most people don't really listen. Instead, we're waiting to talk. Just ask my wife. But the reality is listening is the single most important skill in social media and arguably in business and, and perhaps even in life. And if we can master listening, that underrated social media skill, and just listening, we're going to be able to be way ahead of 95% of the world that doesn't truly listen. I'm going to start with a story that hopefully you guys will all appreciate. Now, this is a very, very sophisticated audience. So I have no doubt that you guys all understand at this point in 2015 the business value of Twitter and the business value of listening. But I'd like to know by show of hands how many people no, at least one executive at a small business or big business, at least one business person somewhere that doesn't yet fully appreciate and understand the business value of listening on Twitter. Pretty much the whole room. Cool. This is a story I share with business executives that fit into that category um, as I make speeches like this all over the world. It was four and a half years ago, and I took a flight from New York to Las Vegas. I was staying at the trendiest hotel at the, to at the time, the Aria. And it took a five and a half hour flight. And I got to Vegas, went to check into my room to get a little, uh, little rest before hitting the blackjack tables. And there was a really long line to check in. In fact, I was waiting online for 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Eventually, I was waiting online for over 45 minutes to check in. So of course, I did what any social media nerd would do took out my smartphone, and I tweeted, waiting online over 45 minutes at the Aria. Not worth it. Hashtag fail. <laughs> Which for, if there are any newbies in the audience, that basically means you guys suck. <laughs> well, the Aria didn't respond to my tweet. In fact, the Aria has never responded to my tweet five years later. But guess what? 
The Rio down the street responded to my tweet within two minutes. Now, when I tell this story to senior executives all over the world, they get super excited. They think this is the ROI moment. What did the Rio tweet back? Come on over, Dave. We have a room with your name on it, or something like that. And a few of you are probably thinking that as well. The Rio didn't tweet that. If they had tweeted something like that, I would have thought two things. First, it's kind of creepy that they're stalking me this aggressively. And second, why is it jam-packed and happening at the Aria when it's wide open at the Rio? What's up with that? Instead, what the Rio tweeted back was the following. Sorry you're having a bad experience, Dave. Hope the rest of your time in Vegas goes well. Sorry you're having a bad experience, Dave. Hope the rest of your time in Vegas goes well. Well, guess where I stayed the next time I went to Vegas, and the time after that, and the time after that. And the story gets even better than that because I liked the Rio on Facebook, and several months later I got a Facebook message from a friend who wrote, Dave, I'm having a family reunion in Vegas this New Year's. I saw you liked the Rio. Do you recommend them? And I said, well, let's be honest. It's not the trendiest hotel in Vegas. It's not the newest hotel in Vegas. But I'll tell you one thing, I know they listen. She booked 20 people to stay at the Rio on the basis of that recommendation. One tweet, one like, tens of thousands of dollars worth of revenue. And there's not a single marketer in this room that could possibly argue that that was a marketing message from the Rio, because it wasn't. Literally, all they did was listen and demonstrate empathy. And they won my business for life with that. Now, as important as it is to listen to your prospects, it's even more important to listen to your existing customers. Who here recognizes the logo behind me? Okay, about 10 people out of 300 raised their hand. Let me tell you what this logo is. A few years ago, a company that you do all know, Netflix, decided they would split up their business into two separate businesses. One would be this, uh, this, this video streaming service, and another would be this awesome mail order DVD business. <laughs> and they launched Quickster. And here's the thing, within 24 hours of that launch, hundreds of thousands of people tweeted and posted on Facebook and posted everywhere online that they hated the idea of Quickster. And Netflix, to their remarkable credit, listened, and they shut down Quickster within 72 hours. Can you imagine a company of that size changing strategic decisions that quickly? Well, we all know what's happened since then. We've got the orange is the new black and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, House of Cards. And for anyone with kids, you have to watch the show Mako Mermaids, really awesome Netflix original, <laughs> just saying. Beautiful mermaids in Australia. Somebody watches, thank you. <laughs> Can you imagine if they hadn't listened? Can you imagine if Netflix had just, had just insisted upon following their corporate strategy and not listening to their customers on social media, how different things might have been? Here's the thing, a lot of us in the audience don't have businesses the size of the Rio or Netflix. How many of you have a small business or work with small businesses? Cool. I'm really passionate about small businesses now. That's what I'm focused on with Likeable Local, our newest company. And the thing is, your customers are asking for you literally right now. So let's say, let's say you're, you're an agency. You're a marketing consultant. You could do a Twitter search right now for need help growing my business. And you would find people right now that are saying they need help growing their business. They need your help. If you're an accountant, you could look for people that say, need help with an accountant. If you're a lawyer, good luck. No. <laughs> if you're a lawyer, you could look on Twitter for people looking for the words, need a lawyer. Your customers are literally asking for you, and all you need to do is listen, and then pay attention in a positive way. Don't spam them like some of you thought the Rio would do. Instead, be useful, be helpful, connect with them, engage with them, and that's how you start to build your brand in social media, one person at a time. Now, as important as listening is, 
Eventually, you need to actually join the conversation. You need to say something. So next, let's talk about responsiveness. The quote here from Charles Swindle, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. And if you can pay attention to what's happening in social media, who's talking about you, who's talking about your competitors, who's talking about uh, uh, things that indicate that, they, that people have a need for you, and then respond, that goes a very, very long way as well. I truly believe that responsiveness is no longer optional. And I have an absolutely stunning stat to share with you guys. 60%, according to the last data, 60% of brands and businesses do not respond to their customers talking about them in social media. 60%. Can you imagine somebody calling you up on the phone and saying, you know, hey, I, I really have a problem with this. Can you imagine just hanging the phone up on them? What about, what, what about if somebody called you up on the phone, but you were sitting in the middle of a football field? Can you imagine in that same situation with, with people in the stands, somebody calls you up on the phone to talk about your product or service and you just hang up the phone on them? Not responding is like hanging up the phone on a customer with dozens or hundreds or even potentially thousands of people watching. And I know it's hard, but I'm gonna show you guys a very simple model for how to respond. So in order to show you that, I wanna point out uh, my friend Ray, who posted on the Verizon Facebook. How many, how many of you guys know Verizon? Pretty big brand, yeah, okay. How many of you guys like Verizon? No, just kidding. Um, anyone here that works for Verizon? I should probably ask before I, uh, okay, cool, better. So for, Ray posts the following. I'll, I'll, I, it's kind of small print, so I'll read it for you guys. Hey Verizon, why won't you give me my money back? I sign up for your Verizon bundle pack and I'm paying $300 a month and my service is supposed to cost about 120. We call you every month and the problem is never fixed. Funny thing is I know of about 10 other people you're doing this to, telling them one price and billing them another and not refunding money when you admit you are wrong. You guys suck. And a lawsuit may be in your near future. Have a great day, you bunch of crooks. <laughs> now, you can imagine when, um, uh, Likeable Media was working with Verizon at the time. When, when Likeable Media uh, caught a hold of this, uh, our, our first company, our agency, the, uh, there were a couple of senior executives at Verizon that were not very comfortable with this. There may have even been one or two, I'm just saying, there may have been one or two that wanted to delete such a comment. But what happens if you delete a comment? You know, not responding or deleting a comment is a response. It is a very powerful response. <laughs> Any of you seen the, the video, United Breaks Guitars? Okay, so um, it's only a couple. So basically, uh, a guy named Dave Carroll took a cross-country flight with his guitar. He was a musician. He took a cross-country flight with his guitar. The guitar broke on the flight. He posted a complaint. They deleted it, and he wasn't very happy about that, so um, he was a musician, so he made a little YouTube video called United Breaks Guitars. <laughs> Over 20 million people have now seen that YouTube video. So, you know, you might not have a national brand, but are you, are you really willing to risk your reputation on, on, on not responding to a customer? Are you really willing to do that? So here's what you do. You respond publicly saying that you're addressing the issue privately. That'll de-escalate the situation so you don't see a, a back and forth publicly. And then, of course, you have to solve the problem. Very, very basic customer service here. Listen, apologize, solve, thank. So we sent, we, sent, we, we posted a public uh, message on the thread that said, hey, Ray, sorry you're having a bad experience. We've sent you a private message to help fix the problem. And then, of course, you have to actually fix the problem. Sometimes that's harder than other times. But if you can do that, things can change in an instant. And Ray, just a few days later on that same Facebook page in front of hundreds of thousands of people, posted the following. I want to thank Vance of Fires for fixing my billing problem. Devin was awesome, and I would like to thank her for her help. Had a regional manager call us today and went over the bill, corrected our bill, thank you. And for the record, I love the FIOS service and the extreme internet package makes me jump up and down every time I download anything or play a game. Thank you, Verizon FIOS. No more crook casts for us. Same guy? It's crazy. This guy literally went from a raving lunatic to a raving fan. 
in three days. Simply by listening and responding. Very, very basic stuff, but everybody takes it for granted. The most important words in social media, and maybe the four most important words in business, and maybe the four most important words in life, are I'm sorry and thank you. Just say I'm sorry and thank you. Say I'm sorry when you screw up, not our apologies. And say thank you when somebody has something nice to say. Are there, in fact, any lawyers in the room? Okay, so sorry about this. I know lawyers don't really love the I'm sorry words. I've dealt with a lot of corporate lawyers that aren't huge fans of the I'm sorry thing. They think it's an admission of liability, et cetera. But the bottom line is you can always, in my opinion, you can always, always say, I'm sorry for your experience. I'm sorry you're experiencing this. Just try the words and see how quickly it diffuses a situation online. Here's an example. You guys have Entenmann's up here, I think? Yeah, really tasty treats. Cookies, yeah? Cool. So Entenmann's a couple years ago tried a treat that uh, didn't work out so well. It was called Pancake Pockets. <laughs> Listen, I love Entenmann's. I, I love me some chocolate chip cookies. <sighs> Pancake Pockets, not meant to be. But anyway, Taylor, this young lady, posts on the Entenmann's Facebook page, Pancake Pockets are the worst things I've ever tried. They'd made me throw up if they're strawberry disgust. I'm not going to count the number of exclamation points, but there are, there, are, there are many. She really feels emphatically about this. So, okay, that's fine. Antimins, to their credit, responds, Hey, Taylor, thank you for your feedback. Did you heat them or eat them at room temp? We're really sorry you had a bad experience. It's okay, everything else is great. Thanks so much to close the loop. That whole, that whole conversation took an hour, an hour. It's amazing, right, just how you can change someone's opinion. Because we're all human beings, so we all kind of get that there are other human beings out there that make mistakes, like pancake pockets. <laughs> and the thing is, when you know somebody's going to make a mistake, that's cool. I get it. It's when people don't fess up to it. It's when people don't say, I'm sorry. It's when people won't be vulnerable that it becomes more of a problem. Now, it's really important to respond to all the negative stuff, obviously. But for me, the real joy in social media comes in responding to everything, the positive, the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent. And here's a really great slide from a woman named Stephanie Schwab. I really love this slide. It talks about different ways to respond in social media, different ways to bring your true brand voice to life. Because here's the cool thing, in social media, we're all like humans. We all basically have accounts, no matter how big your business is, that can be personal or playful, informative or entertaining, professorial or friendly, simple or complex. So you can have a lot of fun with shaping what your brand looks like in social media and in responding to people. Now, the cool part is responding to positive comments in your own unique voice. As important as it is to respond to the negative stuff, can you imagine, how many of you guys have retail stores? Any retail locations? A bunch? Can you imagine somebody walking up to you at your retail location and being like, I love this place, I've been coming here for years, great staff, great products, really love this place. Hold on, I gotta deal with something else, I gotta go. Of course not. You'd thank them, you'd give them a hug, you'd give them some swag, you'd hook them up. So, we have Cumberland Farms up here, I think? Cool. So, love Cumberland Farms. They were a really long-time client of, of Lycoma Media, and they're, for anyone that doesn't know, a big convenience store chain in, in New England based down, down in Massachusetts, and um, they have this product called the Cumberland Farms Chill Zone. Now, the Chill Zone is really, really popular with teenagers and no one else. Just that, last time I did this, I, I did this in Miami, and there was a guy who had had a chill zone. Is there anyone that has had a chill zone in the audience? Awesome. Okay, a whole bunch. Cool. Probably when you were teenagers. But <laughs> So when Cumberland Farms took to social media to represent the chill zone product, okay, they said, we really want to meet our actual audience. 
And we want our voice to be like our actual audience. So, Ben Silver posts on the Cumberland Farms Chill Zone page, sometimes I just lay under the faucet and chug Chill Zone until I pass out. <laughs> now, <sighs> all right, you know, better than pancake pockets, I guess. So, now, now he, now, now Cumberland Farms, very big company, for a long time owned by Gulf, okay, they could potentially respond like kind of seriously or, you know, well, how do you even respond to this? <laughs> but to their credit, again, they know their voice, they know their audience, they respond right away, ha, 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 what a baller. <laughs> now, to be clear, I am not saying, I am not saying that if you have a law firm in town, you should start talking like this or a bank, or certain B2B firms. But the point is, know your audience, determine your brand, bring your brand to life, and you really can have more fun with your brand than you're probably having right now. Next, let's talk about storytelling. I like to say, tell, don't sell. Don't sell. And Robert Mac McKee Brown said, storytelling is the most powerful way to put ideas into the world today. Well, I believe it's frankly always been the most powerful way to put ideas into the world, storytelling. But if you were a brand, if you were a business, how could you tell a story, say, 20 years ago? Shout it out. Radio, newspapers, the 30-second spot. That's how you told a story 20 years ago. 30-second spot on TV, 30-second spot on radio, billboards, direct mail, trade shows five-color glossy brochures. Here's the thing about all those things. Sometimes they're really awesome and they work really well. And sometimes not so much. But I can tell you one thing, every time you do a 30-second spot on TV or radio or billboard or five-color glossy brochure sent to you know, X number of zip codes out there, it takes a lot of time and a lot of money. A lot of time and a lot of money. And sometimes it works out really well, and sometimes not so much. So are you willing to risk that? Because now, today, in 2015, there's another way. You can story tell through social media. It takes very, very little time and very, very little money. You can story tell with your iPhone, taking a picture, taking a short video, a tweet, a webinar, an infographic, a blog post, and bring your story to life. And the best part about it is, if it doesn't resonate, like if your story is kind of like falls flat, change it up like the next day or the next hour. You have an ability, there's no barrier to entry to social media storytelling. So you have an ability to tell your story in social media until you get it totally right. Here's my story. Eight years ago, fell in love with this awesome woman and we both had a marketing background and we couldn't have, we couldn't afford a big wedding, but we did have a cool, uh, a good marketing background. So we had an idea to partner with a minor league baseball team and put together a pretty cool sponsored wedding. And we partnered with the Brooklyn Cyclones and 1-800 Flowers sponsored our flowers and Smirnoff sponsored our alcohol and David's Bridal sponsored our bridesmaids gowns. And we raised $100,000 for an awesome wedding and $20,000 for charity. And we got married in front of 5,000 strangers and 500 friends and family. And um, the event was really, really awesome and not only not only was it a huge promotional success, uh, not only was it a great wedding, it turned out to be a huge promotional success. And after the wedding, our vendor said, this was awesome, what are you guys going to do next? And we couldn't get married, so we started a company instead. <laughs> so I can tell that story, and I still do eight years later and two companies later, because I know it resonates. I can tell it with one picture and a little bit of copy. And if it doesn't resonate, I can switch it up and tell it a little bit differently tomorrow. What's your story? What are the stories that you can tell about your humble beginnings, about customers that have experienced obstacles and overcome them thanks to you, about staff members that have grown thanks to you, about community or charity partnerships that you have? Everyone has lots of stories to tell. And the thing is, there are lots of really great tools out there to help you tell your story uh, like Likeable Hub.
Now, the only thing, the only thing that's better than telling your story is getting your customers to tell your story for you. That's better. It's really awesome if you can get your customers to tell your story for you. Now, this next slide is, a, is from a brand that every single person in this room has heard of. And I would venture to say every single person in, in this room has seen advertising from this brand because they spend mm, a lot of money on advertising, a heck of a lot of money on advertising. But what you're going to see is a totally free ad that they got thanks to social media and perhaps some customers being inspired to share their story. This is the I Love Mary at McDonald's in Chandler, Arizona Facebook page. <laughs> True story. Now, I think it's awesome that there are 1,402 members of the I Love Mary at McDonald's in Chandler, Arizona Facebook page. But even better than that are the comments on this timeline. I haven't seen Mary lately. Where has she been? Happy People Day, Mary. We love you in the Rocky Mountain region. And my all-time favorite, Mary is the best. This is the picture of us at my 40th birthday party on Saturday night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of crazy. I don't know if that birthday was at McDonald's or what. <laughs> but I don't know about you guys, but I, I literally want to go to Chandler, Arizona. I don't even eat McDonald's. But I want to go to Chandler, Arizona to go to this McDonald's to meet this Mary. And by the way, I did this uh, presentation at South by Southwest a couple years ago. And uh, somebody walked up to me after the conference and said, I've been to that McDonald's and Mary really is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's the best part. So my question for you is twofold. First. Who's your Mary? Who's your employee or what's your product or service that's truly remarkable, that's truly worth talking about? At Likeable Local, it's TurboPost. It's really cool technology that turns every single post into a paid Facebook ad. So that's my Mary, is TurboPost. Who's your Mary or what's your Mary? And second, even more important, who's your Delin Lucas Bach? Delin Lucas Bach is the customer that started this Facebook page. Who are your customers that are going to be willing to tell your story for you? Those are your brand ambassadors. Those are your evangelists. Those are the people to truly, truly take care of and inspire. Dr. Banks is a likable Delin Lucas Bach for us. Dentist, loves us, calls me all the time telling me how much he loves us. It's kind of annoying, <laughs> but I love it. And I love it. Next, let's talk about authenticity. Oprah said, I had no idea that being my authentic self could have made me as rich as I've become. If I had, I'd have done it a lot earlier. So Oprah figured this out, but for some reason, so many of us, especially I think of a certain generation, right, old people like me, um, ha struggle with authenticity and vulnerability online. So many of us want to put up these walls between our personal self and our professional self, between our online self and our offline self, between our public self and our private self. The problem is those walls basically don't exist anymore. It's really, really hard to do. I, I have people that come to me like wanting to do one Facebook profile for their work and one Facebook profile for their home. Or It's really hard. It's just hard to keep track. So the more you can embrace authenticity, the better. Um, uh, as, as Rich said, I've been writing for LinkedIn for uh, several years now, and uh, a couple of years into our first business with Likeable Media, we had some really great brand clients like GE and Verizon and 1-800-Flowers.com, and at the time, I wrote the following. The birth of our company may have been a dream, but there were days, weeks, and even months early on that felt more like a nightmare. We couldn't get a loan from a bank. We couldn't hire the right people. We couldn't manage our cash flow very well. We nearly missed payroll several times. We brought arguments from home to work, and we brought arguments from work to home. Now, when I wrote this, there were some people at my company, like maybe my wife, <laughs> love you, <laughs> like maybe my wife, that thought that maybe this wasn't the coolest, smartest, uh, wisest thing to like post in front of the whole world. And maybe these big companies will be like, what the hell, they nearly missed, missed payroll, like how can we be working with this company? But I'll tell you what, not only did no companies uh, pull out when this guy posted, but 
Um, it, it got shared a lot, and we actually got more business as a result of this. Because people want to do business with people they know, like, and trust. And there is no doubt in my mind that authenticity breeds trust, and trust breeds business. Let's talk about advertising better. Howard Luck Gossage said, nobody reads ads, people read what interests them, and sometimes that's an ad. Here's why social media advertising is so freaking awesome. Two reasons. First is the targeting, and second is the social uh, context or built-in word of mouth. Let's talk about targeting first. Facebook has data on over 1.4 billion people, and you can target people literally based on any single thing that you want. So if you're a Chinese food restaurant in Scarborough, Maine, you can target just people that live in Scarborough, Maine that like Chinese food. Why would you target anyone else? Seriously. How many of you have seen the movie The Social Network? Okay, there's a line in The Social Network, a really famous line. You know what's cooler than a million dollars? A billion dollars. My line when it comes to social media advertising is the opposite. You know what's cooler than reaching a billion people on Facebook? Reaching the right thousand, or the right hundred, or the right ten to grow your business. You don't need to reach as many people as possible, you need to reach the right people. And since you can target people by interest, by job title, by website visited, by age, by marital status, by all those things, you can reach the exact right people. I was at a conference a couple years ago, I wanted to play around with this whole hyper-targeting thing, so I took out an ad targeting 34-year-old female Graduates of Emerson College that worked at Likeable Media were married and lived in the zip code 11050. <laughs> of the billion people on Facebook, only one person saw that ad. <laughs> I love you, Carrie. Be home from Texas soon. Now, this doesn't mean anything unless you want to like go and surprise your significant other right now. But the point is, you can target as narrowly as you want. And maybe you really only do want to reach 10 CEOs in your town, or 10 purchasing managers, or 27 CFOs. Think about exactly who you want to reach and reach the right people using social media advertising. A lot of examples from Facebook where you can do the exact same thing on LinkedIn. The other reason that uh, uh, social media advertising is so powerful is the built-in word of mouth social context. You see, 92% of people trust their friends. I guess 8% don't have very good friends. But fewer than 40% of people trust ads. So if you can actually advertise to people building in word of mouth social context, it's really, really powerful. When I see this ad, it's not Dr. Zuckerberg that's getting my attention. It's not the creative or copy that's getting my attention. It's the fact that my friend Kyle likes Dr. Zuckerberg. My friend Kyle. Oh, cool. I got to check that out. I trust Kyle. If Kyle likes Dr. Zuck, maybe I'd like Dr. Zuck. Great dentist, by the way. And yes, he's Mark's dad. <laughs> True story. Uh, but here's the thing. Take off your social media caps for a minute and imagine a world where you're sitting at home watching TV one day, and normally you fast forward through the commercials, but this time you can't help but notice because on the bottom left-hand corner of your TV is the words, your friend Dave liked this car. Or you're listening to the radio, and you know that little bumper in the end of a radio ad? You hear, three of your friends, including Dave, like this furniture store. <laughs> or you're driving down the street, and you see this huge billboard, and on the bottom is, your friend Hugh likes this jewelry store. You'd be like, oh my god, that's crazy. That's the most powerful advertising ever. Obviously, it doesn't exist with TV, or billboards, or radio, or anything else but social media. So take advantage of the fact that you can advertise using these super awesome tools. Next, provide value for free. Give it away. Give away the whole farm. Albert Einstein said, try not to be a man of success, but rather try to become a man of value. Speaking of giving away things for free, I said, I try to surprise and delight you. So let's, let's go back to the Twitter and choose the top person from the, uh, my Twitter stream who's been tweeting with AOC 2015. This is always when the uh, wireless goes down. <laughs> and I'm going to give you a copy, two copies of my two books. Bowman Productions. Where's Bowman Productions? Oh, they're all the way upstairs. Give it up for Bowman Productions. <laughs> I 
We won't make you guys come down yet, but we'll, we got a couple books for you afterwards, likable social media and likable business. Cool. So what, what does this mean, giveaway value? 10% off, that's not value, that's marketing. Please, give me a break. 50% off is value, gets interesting. And 100% off means you're gonna get loyal customers for life. So what can you really truly give away? Well, anyone, that's, anyone in B2B? If you're in B2B, it's even easier because what you can give away is your brain, your knowledge, webinars, white papers, eBooks, blog posts, infographics, helpful, inspirational, entertaining, educational content. Two companies, eight years, both in social media. I've probably had about 12,000 total updates. And we've tried to add value with maybe 11,500 of them. Yes, occasionally, of course, you gotta promote yourself. But think about how you can add value and it will come back to you in the end. Although, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story. I was actually at a conference a few years ago, uh, not, not, too, not too dissimilar from this conference, and somebody walked up to me and said, hey Dave, I just wanna thank you for all the amazing, valuable content that you've given me and you've given away all these years, and I just wanted to let you know that I've taken all that really amazing content and I've started my own agency. Hmm, wait a minute. Not only are we helping competitors, but we're inspiring competitors. So I was down in the dumps for like 24 hours, and luckily, the phone rang 24 hours later, and it was from a woman who said the following. You know, I've been following you guys, reading your blog for uh, almost a year now, love everything that you uh, put out, and um, we have a pretty large company, so I have to do an RFP, I have to do a request for a proposal, but I have $500,000, and it's yours. So we earned that $500,000 on the one hand by doing nothing, on the other hand, by doing everything, every single day, and putting out valuable content. If you're in the B to C space, you gotta try to give away something, right? You're, the entertaining content works really well, inspiring content works really well, but if you can, I'd like to challenge you to find an actual product that you can give away. I mentioned Cumberland Farms earlier in the awesome Chill Zone page. So when Cumberland Farms Chill Zone had 30,000 fans, we said to them, if you guys can get to 50,000 fans within the next 30 days, we're gonna give you a free chill zone, every single one of you. And they got really, really excited about this. And they got to 50,000, and then 75,000, and then over 100,000 fans, without any advertising whatsoever. And I think you guys know by now, when it comes to Facebook, you gotta pay to play. Not in this case. Now, Cumberland Farms Chill Zone is a 79 cent product. So by giving away a 79 cent product to everyone that comes in the door saying the secret code Facebook, <laughs> they were able to drive a lot of traffic. And so Cumberland Farms did have their free chill zone day and it was the highest grossing sales day in the history of the company. All from giving away free chill zones on social media. As you guys can guess, nothing goes well with a chill zone like maybe a bag of chips or you know some Entenmann's chocolate chip cookies, not pancake pockets. <laughs> B2B, I mentioned some different ways that you can um, uh, put your value out there, LinkedIn webinars, articles, eBooks. I'm gonna move quickly since we're running out of time. And I'm gonna end with the power of gratitude. G.K. Chesterton said, I would maintain that thanks are the highest form of thought and that gratitude is happiness doubled by wonder. Thank you goes a very, very long way in social media. Here's an example from one of my favorite brands in social media, JetBlue, that says thank you to anyone that's tweeting to them uh, on, on, on social. But the interesting thing is this. I'm going to actually close by leaving social media behind for a moment and tell you about what I call the original social media. Donors Choose is my favorite nonprofit. Any of you guys know Donors Choose? Awesome nonprofit, raises money for teachers, classroom projects you can support with just 10 bucks. So Donors Choose did an experiment where they gave half of uh, the, the people in the experiment handwritten thank you cards and the other half email thank you cards. And here's what they found. 
those that got handwritten thank you cards were actually 38% more likely to donate a second time than those that did not get handwritten thank you cards. And they donated more on average. So I fell in love with this concept and I began writing handwritten thank you cards myself. Started with one a week. It's very hard to operationalize things, so ended up uh, increasing that to one a day. And now I write three handwritten thank you cards every single morning. And it's a total game changer for me for two reasons. First, when people get handwritten thank you card from a social media guy, they're like, oh my God, that's crazy. But second, and even more powerfully, here's the crazy thing, guys. When I'm writing those handwritten thank you cards every single morning, it changes my state of mind. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a scientific fact that you cannot be both angry and grateful at the same time. You cannot be upset and grateful at the same time. So let's do this. Let's take two minutes. I've got handwritten thank you cards for everyone. I want to challenge you guys to write a handwritten thank you card right now to one person in your life that you don't get enough of a chance to thank. Take two minutes. Let's get some good thank you card music on. And I'm going to check Twitter because, as I mentioned earlier, I asked my staff to get the most expensive bottle of champagne, and we're giving this away to one person in the next five minutes, but the only way to win this is to tweet it up. Cool. Thank you. So, we're going to wrap up and in a moment we're going to give away a grand prize. You get the bottle of champagne, most expensive bottle of champagne that we could find. I don't really know champagne, but it is Veuve Clicquot Ponsardin. Sorry? Where, yeah, Cumberland Farms, of course. <laughs> I got it on free chill zone day. You get, you get copies of um, uh, both of my uh, books, Likeable Social Media and Likeable Business, and most important, actually more valuable than champagne, you get your very own giant foam finger. And by the way, I kid you not, okay, ever since Miley Cyrus at the VMAs last year, these things have skyrocketed in value. They're huge. So we'll give that away to one uh, lucky tweeter, but first let's quickly regroup the basic concepts of successful social media. Listen, respond, tell, don't sell, be authentic, advertise better, provide value, and be grateful. Okay, quick uh, plug, uh, we are here in, uh, in Portland, the Likeable Local team, our, our development team uh, is here building really, really awesome software for you guys and we're actually having what could potentially be the most likable and certainly largest hackathon in the history of the state of Maine, October 10th through 11th, 24 hours, we have a grand prize of $2,500 cash. If you know any coders, developers, geeks, uh, spread the word and send them our way, go to Likeable Hackathon. Dot com. And now, I don't think we have time for questions, I'm so sorry, but we are going to do a grand prize to one lucky person, the very top person from my Twitter stream right now. Refresh, refresh, holy cow, wow. We're going to trend again, Rich, I think. It is Quarter Steve. Where's Quarter Steve? Give it up for Quarter Steve! Come on up, my man. The, the, I know you, we have cocktails coming up in a little bit, but the post party is at Steve's house. <laughs> Congratulations, That's Steve. Fun. Congrats. And I'm going to close with a quote from my friend and mentor, Seth Godin, who, who says the following. How dare you settle for less when the world has made it so easy to be remarkable? Nothing about social media is rocket science, guys. We can all be remarkable. Follow these very, very simple principles. Thank you so much. With you. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.